Are you sick and tired of being... prescription for your life. Get ready for your daily dose of Healthy Talk Radio, the show that's empowering your health. And now, here's America's health and lifestyle coach. This is the show where your health is your wealth. Thriving is more important than just surviving and the only thing lost of those unwanted pounds. This is Healthy Talk Radio, talk radio that helps you get well, stay well, and live well. Phone lines are open, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. What are you struggling with? Let's talk about it. Your health, your life. Remember, if the body can get sick, it can also get well. Lifestyle is the medicine. So the choices we make today can and will determine the kind of health we're going to have. Choices, it's what it comes down to. More than anything else is our choices. Check us out, asarx.com. You can go to the website, easy to find. And, of course, if you haven't picked up a free copy of our book, we're giving it to you as a gift. So, hardback copy, if you go to the website, go to asarx or go to myfreehealthbook.com. We have a special, special offer we're giving you. So, we send you a copy of the book for free. I pay for it, and then you can cover the shipping. It's a deal. That way you can get started. So many people have been asking and asking where, where, where we're we're working out a deal for you now to help you out so you can get started. It's all about getting started. Sometimes you need somebody to take you by the hand, and that's what we do now. Go to MyFreeHealthBook.com. All right, genes, do they play a role or do they not? I'm always a big fan of saying lifestyles are medicine and that genes aren't that big of a deal. But they do play some role uh, in some things, and They do play a role. Of course, our DNA is part of that. So I'm going to jump in and talk about that in just a moment because I think it's really important. First, I want to go to the phones, though, and talk to Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. Hey, I got a domino pain. Uh, I I want to know what to do. Okay, well, if you got a domino pain, what to do is go to your doctor. Like, that's... That's that's the bottom line. There is no take this, take that, try this, try that. You need to go to your doctor immediately. Abdominal pain can be a, a host of things. And in medicine, many you know we're trained, every doctor's trained to almost believe the worst first. So you got it. You've got to go in with abdominal pain. This is general. There needs to be test run, and also the physician needs to put his hands or her hands on your abdomen to be able to palpate and check and see exactly what's going on you don't leave something like that to just guessing i mean i appreciate you calling me here and and trusting me and and wanting my opinion i I, it means a lot to me i just have to tell you that in a situation like this it's one of those times where as guys and look just because i'm a doctor doesn't mean anything i mean i'm a guy just like you right i'm stubborn I want to just believe it'll be all right. I just want to go into the kitchen and figure out something I can take and make it feel better, right? I don't want to get a bunch of tests. I don't want to go take a bunch, you know, potentially have to take a bunch of medicine. So I get it. So I'm telling you that this is one of those moments where you just need to go to your primary care or your family doc and just be like, look, I got this weird pain. I don't know what it is. And have them check it out because worst case scenario is something. Best case scenario is nothing. It's a bunch of gas. Right, and they help you with your digestion, and you you know you you blow some gas, and then you're on your way, <laughs> and and everything's back to to normal. Then you got to get your gut normal by getting the right kind of bacteria in there, probiotics, and get rid of the yeast and fungal issues in the gut. But all that is is going to happen once the doc checks everything out, and that really is just your game plan. So abdominal pain can be like 101 different things you got to figure out what that is okay and let me know please let me know what they say and then you know i'll give you my thoughts from there all right triple eight two eight three seven two seven two you're listening to the asa rx experience let's get over i'm going to talk about genes for just a minute before i jump into this next call now genetics i talk about this a lot genes is it genetics or is it lifestyle i believe it's lifestyle all the studies have confirmed now that most health challenges like diabetes and high blood pressure, and even things like depression and digestive-related issues, they're diet and lifestyle-related. So I think emotional is a big piece of it, too. 
they call it stress. Okay. That's what they like. The group is stress, but yeah, I mean that play, that all plays a big role, but in academic success, they're talking about genes and DNA and how that plays a role. So genetics account for 60% of your academic achievement, according to a new British study. Genes are important, not just in educational achievement, but or intelligence, but in a whole raft of other traits, which contribute to how easily and enjoyable children find learning. So Eva Craphall, which is a graduate student at King's College in London, did this research. And the research looked at two different things, intelligence and educational achievement, which I think is fascinating. And they found between these two that educational achievement is often an inherited trait. They did this in Great Britain. They said the motivation for the current study was to investigate why educational achievement is so highly heritable. The researchers analyzed that results of education tests given to students in Great Britain when they finished these compulsory uh, uh, education system that they do at age 16. They said the scientists focused on more than 13,000 twins in the study. They said that identical twins share 100% of the genes. Non-identical twins, just as any other siblings, share 50% of the genes, and that can differ as well. But they found, the researchers found, which is pretty interesting, that these genes had greater influence on test scores in English, science, and math than they did in other issues like personality, behavior, and health. Which personality, behavior, and health are really your, your greatest assets, by the way. That's what carries you. It's not the other. Okay? So that's interesting. See, it shows you something. Okay, let me say that again. I'm going to go back over this again. The researchers found that genes, genetics, or DNA, had a greater influence on test scores. All right? How well you do in school. But only in English, science, and math and it really didn't have that much factor the genes didn't on personality behavior and health so what does that tell you it tells you that with math and with science and these other things than English that your genes play a big role okay that intelligence factor how well you're going to produce in those areas <laughs> but genes have no impact in behavior, that's your choice, how you choose to behave, whether you're kind or not, whether you treat people well or you don't, your personality, that's your choice, what kind of person you are. Are you doing personal development? Do you work on yourself every single day or do you not? That's not genetics. And then your health. So it's saying right there that your health's not genetic. Okay, it's not. For the most part, small percentage. But it's saying right there that your health is not. Genetics, it's all choice. It's lifestyle. It's what you're doing every single day. It's the choices you make every single day that accumulate over and over and over and over again. And takes you to a point where you're either going to do well or you're not. I mean, it really comes down to that more than anything. So I would I would, I look at this and this, the study doesn't say everything about every single child, Renfield said, but he believes... She believes that that does point to the idea that kids vary greatly and need personalized education instead of a one-size-fits-all. Man, I agree with that. That's where we're headed, by the way, in the educational system. Matt McGue, a professor of psychology at the University of Minnesota, said he praised the study and said its findings reflect previous research in how genes and academic prowess are connected. The link may be even stronger the older people get. Now there's growing literature indicating that individual ages, the importance of genetic influence on intelligence is huge. We'll be right back. Find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com. Welcome back to the show, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. What are you struggling with? Let's talk about it, your health, your life. Remember, if the body can get sick, it can also get well. Lifestyle is the medicine. We had an email that came in. Karen in Charleston, South Carolina, love Charleston, 
says, my husband has really bad dandruff. <laughs> what can help? Well, dandruff is, is, it comes from different methods and areas, different theories behind it. And a lot of times, of course, it's the dry flakiness of the scalp. And one of the big things that can help, one of the big, really, keys that will help with dandruff is checking your fatty acids. Now, there's a blood test we do in our company in, with our coaching company, Potential. And all of our providers, that's what they do. We, we always check labs on people and, and make sure that your deficiencies are not, they have no deficiencies, that everything balances out. And whatever the gaps need to be filled in, we do that. So our lifestyle providers do that. And what I've found is, and what we have found more than anything, is that with dandruff, a lot of times there's a really, really high probability that you've got an imbalance between your omega-3 fats and your omega-6 fats. Well, you start to balance that out, it begins to heal that process, and then all of a sudden, guess what? Dandruff begins to go away. Or it could be an imbalance in the gut. It could be something similar to yeast buildup, or it could be an, a bacterial overgrowth or an imbalance in the gut. That could be a possibility. So you just have to look and see. Again, everything's in the test. You don't want to just guess. You don't want to guess, oh, it might be this, might be that. Could be this, could be that. You get tired of the could be's. Don't want to do could be's. You want to know. Know that you know that you know. So those can be helpful. But again, it's really, I, I, I'm a big fan of getting tested, Karen. I think getting tested to see where the fatty acid profiles are is going to be your best bet. Okay. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. What are you struggling with? Give us a call. Please let us know. We'll make it part of the show. Now, I can answer in private, too. We do that all the time. So if you want to send us an email, go to asarx.com, or you can just fire away something here on the show. Call, talk to my producer. We'll, we'll do it in private. Whatever you need, okay? We're here for you each and every day. That is what we're here for. All right, let's get on the phones and go to Benjamin. Hi, Benjamin. I was having real bad pain uh, in my hips, so arthritis. And you need help with that, I guess. So, yeah, with arthritis in the hips, there's there's a lot of different forms of arthritis, several. And first, got to figure out what it is. And even if it's at that, because a lot of times doctors will just throw the whole diagnosis of arthritis because it's just inflammation of the hip. Sounds like some crazy, scary diagnosis. It's really not. It's just a name for what it is. So you got inflammation going on in the hip. And so many times you just got to look at that and say, okay, what do I do? How do I get this corrected? And if it's if it's wear and tear, then it's still, everybody has wear and tear in their joints. It's part of the aging process. And if you haven't done anything, it's the only way you wouldn't have any kind of wear or tear. Now we're even figuring out if you sit around and lay around, you're going to have wear and tear just from the sedentary part of the lifestyle. So it's like you really, you're going to get it no matter what. You might as well choose how you get it. And I'd rather be up moving around and, and have my body functioning better. Matter of fact, they're learning now that for the arthritis, the more you move, the less the symptoms you'll have. And it can actually be beneficial to exercise when you have arthritis because it can actually improve the area. Reason is... Once you start strengthening the joints around an area, whether it's like the hip joint or whatever, once you start handling those areas and getting them balanced, that's when you really start to win. Because it can actually decrease the inflammation, can decrease the pain, and you not have to do all that. So with arthritis, I would start with an anti-inflammatory diet. That's a, a real good thing to research and look up. If you need a copy of that, just go to the website. Our website, we're sending everybody a free copy of my hardback book, Empowering Your Health. You go there. Go to MyFreeHealthBook.com, MyFreeHealthBook.com. We send you the book for free, okay? There's a little bit of shipping cost there. You pay for the shipping. We send you the book, and and then you can get started. It's got everything in there you need, and it'll teach you everything about health that you need. Understand it. It takes it from A to Z about what's really going on with your health. It's It's a great, great piece that will help you. So I would look at that first. Okay, that's that's where I would go first. Now, you can also you can also do some things which I think are really important. And one of the things you got to look at when it comes to arthritis is your movement. So find out what your doctor is okay with you doing. If it's not real bad, if it's just kind of minor, I would do every form of exercise you could to strengthen that area, cardio and weight training and resistance training and body weight training and 
maybe pick up a sport where you do where you get a lot of movement in your lower body i mean whatever it takes you want to get that done so you just got to got to have a good overall game plan to get started that's the key that's all you have to do get started okay and then from there you can build a solid plan around that but yeah keep me posted on how that's going and don't forget to kind of like what I'm always talking about is get tested. Learn what your nutritional deficiencies are. Learn what the weak areas are and the strong areas are. And and more than that is when you've got any kind of arthritis, it means your inflammation is up. And when the inflammation is up, then you've got to get to a point where you're getting the right kind of omega fats and get the balance between the sixes and the nines and the threes. So get that all tailored and taken care of and then build a game plan around it. And that's going to carry you really the furthest. Okay. 888 Give us a call or go to the website, asarx.com. Have you subscribed to the podcast? Like, I'm serious. Have you done it yet? Because we're getting tons of calls, emails. We have to email everybody back saying, look, if you miss something on the show or if you want to get more access to what we're doing, then then subscribe to the podcast, the Ace RX Experience. We put out a brand new show every single day, a brand new form of content, whether it's an interview or maybe I rant on diabetes, or maybe I talk about how to lose weight and strip off the belly fat, or maybe I, I interview a, a, a physician and we're talking about whatever we're wanting to talk about for that day. So we have all kinds of ways to encourage you and give you fresh content every day so you can thrive. Because that's what we want to do. We want to see you thrive. We want to see you go to the next level with your health and life. That's what it's about. Okay? That's what it's about. It's about building, really, your overall fitness. It's about building your overall men mental state to be able to make better decisions. It comes down to choices every single day. We'll jump in with more calls. Plus, I want to talk a little bit about depression when we come back. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book, for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, visit the show online, inshapenetwork.com. 888 That's 888 Welcome back to the show. Check us out on the web. Go to asarx.com. We're here for you each and every day. Whatever you're struggling with, we want to see you really live your potential. Because we all, we all have potential. Are we tapping into it? No. Are we reaching it? No. Are we getting close to it? No. So we want to see you live your potential. That is what it's all about. Depression is a topic that is becoming more and more relevant. More people are struggling with it than ever. And it's really good the conversation is getting started. Like most people just kind of hid behind the curtains. It was always thought of as something that's embarrassing. Like who is really depressed? Yet yet it's like antidepressants are like the number three prescribed medication in the world. So what does that tell you? I mean, depression is rampant. People are struggling. And people need help. And when you're depressed or you have these feelings, I just want to encourage you that you don't need to be stuck. You don't need to feel like you don't have the support around you. You don't need to feel like that you're that you can't win. Because the reality is you can win. If you create the choices that you or if you start making the circumstances that you need, and we all do, if you start laying out a foundation for yourself. And that's where it all starts, okay? So the key is not getting stuck. The key is winning. The key is making a good decision. The key is believing in yourself. The key is how you talk to yourself. The key is your, your choices that you make every single day. All of that makes a difference. So depression is not just about feeling blue. It's a serious condition, okay? And I really encourage you to ask for help. Like there is no shame in asking for help. It's actually a cool thing because there's there, there's so many counselors and people and physicians that can help walk you through that process. And I think one of the biggest or the worst things you can do in feeling depressed is be isolated and not tell anybody and to struggle with it and not have that shoulder to lean on to, to, to deal with it and 
to really not get the help that you need. Like you have to, you have to make that happen. So it may be uncomfortable, but I just want to encourage you, like no matter how your mood is, no matter how you feel, ask for help, set that time, get with someone. Depression has to come all at once. So it's, it, it's incremental. Sometimes people don't just get blindsided with massive depression. It, it kind of eases in every day, right? Just kind of eases in a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're in bed all day. Can't get up, can't think straight, can't be positive, can't encourage someone else, can't work, right? Can't take care of yourself. So you want to seek support. There's so much good support. And here's some tips for taking the first step. So number one, you got to recognize that your negative feelings are part of your depression and do not reflect the reality of your situation. So just because you're feeling negative, that doesn't mean that's your reality. Understand that depression is not a sign of weakness. You're not weak if you're depressed. Like there's physiological reasons why somebody gets depressed. There's chemicals like serotonin that get really low and people get depressed. But seek help from your doctor or maybe it's a counselor, a pastor, uh, a mental health professional, social worker, someone in assistance at work, maybe a counselor at your school. But avoid the temptation to isolate yourself. That is the number one thing people do when they get depressed is they go into isolation. And if you're introverted by nature, this is going to be your first move. And I'm telling you, don't do that. Do the complete opposite. Reach out for help. Go talk to someone. When you're feeling bummed out and you're in bed, I mean, that is the game changer. When you're in bed and you're constantly tired and depressed, then it's time. Like, you got to get your butt up and you have to go talk to someone. Set an appointment, get started, start releasing it, start talking, start getting it out, and start on your road to recovery and start your road toward healing because it's not going to happen until you're ready. Like, you have to go make that happen. Nobody's going to do that for you. You got to step up and do that, okay? So, depression is a big deal and you can't just stay where you are. Otherwise, you'll stay where you are, if that makes any sense. Coping with depression, your friends and family can help. So here's some basics when it comes to family and friends. Ask them to listen when you need someone to talk to. Look, ask them. Say, look, I really need you to listen. Not be on your phone. Look at me. I need to talk to you. Like, ask them to listen. Ask for help with chores and errands. Look, if you're struggling, you can hardly get things done. Get your family and friends to help you. Ask your family and friends to remind you to eat well, go to sleep at regular hours, and get out of the house for exercise. You may need some accountability. There's nothing wrong with that. Like get the accountability. Ask them to go for a walk or get with you and go to a movie or just stop by and spend some time with you. Ask them to keep you away from the drugs and the alcohol and ask them to be supportive and remind you that there's light at the end of the tunnel as you're in recovery. And here's the thing. Ask them to get you to your doctor or appointments on time. They may not be able to help in other ways, but they can help there. And if you feel like ever, 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 or someone you know ever brings this up and they feel like hurting themselves, make sure, and they don't have anybody to talk to, get them someone. Okay, you can call 911. There's a 24-hour national suicide hotline. Like if somebody gets in that place, one thing if they're joking or kind of just trying to get your attention or just getting attention, or you can tell somebody's serious. So at the, the number for that suicide hotline is 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-TALK, T-A-L-K. But it takes courage. Look, depression is not easy, all right? And I can tell you that it's one of those things where it takes courage. You know, courage is facing your fear or feeling the fear and doing it anyway. I teach my daughter that all the time. And it's, it's facing your fear or recognizing your fear or seeing your fear and having the courage to walk through whatever you got to walk through. And that's the big key. So I want to encourage you with depression. It's, it's a big deal. You've got to get the help. You've got to have somebody to walk with you. You've got to have somebody to support you. But ask, okay? Ask, ask, ask. That's the key. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. You're listening to the Asa RX Experience. Go to asarx.com, and if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, do that as well. It'll be an encouragement to you each and every day. Candy in Gulf Shores, Alabama. I know it's not really a disease or anything, but I'm recently divorced. I have some custody with my five year old boy, and there's a lot of things I wouldn't understand or even know that led to this. All I know is he he's hyperactive all the time. 
And what do I do with that? Well, again, could it be what you've gone through relationally? Maybe. And, and it could be contributing to it. But if he's having these ADHD or attention hyperactivity uh, deficit issues, then just get into his pediatrician and have a conversation. Don't let it sit. Don't just let it be, oh, it's probably because of what me and my husband went through. Don't say that. Like, focus on your son and focus on the now, not what it could be, what it might have been. Focus on the now and get him help. Because there's a lot of things nutritionally you can do with something like that. The hyperactivity, you can really take take a toll on that when you get your fatty acid levels balanced. That's number one in anyone, but a child especially. And then cut out processed sugars, processed carbohydrates. When you cut all of that out, that's going to be a big deal. So there's a lot you can do. But the big thing is focusing on the brain and the brain health. So things like pyridoxal 5-phosphate, vitamin B5, pantothenic acid, and then your vitamin C, all of that's super helpful. Okay, Keep me posted on how that's going. 888-283-7272. Let's get on the phones and go to Ethan. Hi, Ethan. I had type 2 diabetes, and it's, uh, it's been reversed been reverse over a year now. But my eyes are still kind of cloudy. I need to know what it takes to clear up my eyes so it, I don't have to be looking through like a cloud. The doctor said it was just glucose and maybe some protein in there. All right, the first thing in this conversation that I want to get after you, you were diagnosed with diabetes, and it's reversed. So you're no longer diagnosed with diabetes, by the way. So I hope you have that in your head and it didn't just slip out that way. So the big thing is you don't have diabetes. If it's reversed and the numbers are back to normal, then you're back to normal. You can have something and it goes away. Okay? The cloudy vision that could be a little residual from other things, it may not even be due to diabetes in the blood sugar. It could be just inflammation in the body. It could be inflammation in the gut. It could be some of the basics that we look at and and see so i mean it's one of those things that you you have to look at because the cloudy vision it could it could be something so simple it could be diabetes related but it could be a vitamin a deficiency because something so simple as that vitamin a which is the multivitamin of the eye it could be easily caused by that so i would do this i would get some testing done figure out what the deficiencies are Get with a provider that does provider-guided personalized nutrition. If you need help with, with that, just let us know. We can help you find someone in your area. Our lifestyle providers are amazing. They're all over the country. So we can help you find someone in your area that can help you and really walk you through the process. The other thing you want to look at, and this is super important, and especially with cloudy vision, is making sure that you've got enough and that you're balanced enough with not having heavy metals when you want to look at heavy metals in the body there's some testing you can be done that can be done for that mercury a lot of times can be elevated due to food and water supply and especially if you've eaten certain foods over a long period of time certain areas of the country have higher mercury levels certain foods like certain fish can do that so a lot of my heavy fish eaters sometimes can have higher mercury levels that can be an issue so a lot of these can begin to wreak havoc on your health if you don't get control of it and don't really get it laid down that's the key so i would start there all right start there and then let me know how it goes go to an ophthalmologist don't jerk around and go to three different doctors get to an ophthalmologist go ahead and go straight to the specialist have them take a look at it and then look at things like lutein which is a derivative of vitamin a those can be very very helpful this is asa rx go to asarx.com Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. What are you struggling with? Let's talk about it. Your health, your life. Remember, if the body can get sick, it can also get well. Did you know that? You should know that. Lifestyle is our medicine. It really is. And it's the ultimate key to really get you where you want to be. All right, lifestyle choices, the food you eat every single day, the way you think, how much water you take in, all of that, right, lays out the foundation for you to be able to live your potential. 
And if you haven't checked out and got a free copy of my book, you better. It's a bestseller, hardback copy. We send it to you absolutely free. Just cover the shipping to get it to you. Go to myfreehealthbook.com. That's myfreehealthbook.com and grab a copy of it. It'll encourage you. It's got the anti-inflammatory diet in there and it really lays out everything A to Z. I want to help you. I'm giving it to you as a gift, right? It's a gift. So we want to help. All right. Fitter seniors can have healthier brains. Now, if you like using the term seniors, whatever, I think every age is kind of irrelevant. But fitter seniors can have healthier brains. Regardless, we know this. And, and by the way, what I'm about to tell you is for fit seniors. But look, it's for fit 20, you're young somethings, or 30, or 40, or 50. Like, it's, it, it's for everyone. So good heart and lung fitness can benefit older adults' brains, the researchers report. They assessed heart and lung fitness of healthy young adults, aged 18 to 31, and older adults, 55 to 74, and compared to their ability to learn and remember the names of strangers in photos, MRI scans, recorded images of their brain activity, as they learned the names. The older adults had more difficulty with the memory test than the young adults, but the older adults with high levels of heart Lung fitness did better on the test, showed more brain activity than when learning new names than those of their peers with lower levels of the heart and lung fitness. So the increased brain activity of those with the higher levels of heart and lung fitness occurred in regions typically affected by age-related decline. The findings also suggested that heart lung fitness may also help keep the brain healthy and as people get older, according to the researchers, the study didn't prove really a cause and effect, but they did show that when you have good heart and lung fitness, the modifiable health factor that can be improved is very strong. This was all done by the psychiatry division at the Boston University School of Medicine. Therefore, starting any exercise program, regardless of your age, can not only contribute more to the physical health, but also to memory performance and brain function. So they said this in a news release powerful if you think about it it really is so exercise at any age is going to improve your overall health your nutrition at any age is going to improve your overall health it really all of it it makes a huge difference all the way around Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. give us a call to be part of the show we're going to the phones right now and talk to mark hi mark i was wanting to find out about joint pain and cod liver oil uh if cod liver oil would help and what to take. Yeah, it does. I mean, with joint pain, joint pain can be a, a result of a couple different things. Now, you could have really, really low vitamin D levels and have joint pain. I mean, that's that's a, a given. So low vitamin D levels are very, very closely associated with a lot of the joint pains. Low serotonin, which is a brain chemical that makes you feel good. If it's low, then you could have joint pain, body aches, all of that. So see, all those go hand in hand together. Fish oil, the reason I like it, and you mentioned cod liver oil, I like the vitamin A and the vitamin D in it, but I really like fish oil. I like getting the fatty acids balanced. Fish oil is important because, number one, we can't get it in our foods. We, I mean, we can't get it naturally, just manufactured in our body. We have to get it from specific foods. And getting your fatty acids to balance is a challenge. A lot of people have low fatty acid levels or imbalanced fatty acid levels, and that's really the key because – Everything from your immune system to your hormone system to your cells and your everything, your brain, these fatty acids play a role. And if they're not balanced out, if they're not really where they need to be, then you're going to struggle. You're going to have a hard time. And you have to make a difference by the choices you're making. Like No doubt about it. It, it does not happen any other way. So I would look at a place, fish oil, at least get 14 grams a day. All right, that's that's kind of the gold standard. People say just take a, a little bit here and there. No, if 14 grams a day is really what you want to shoot for. So a concentrated version of that, getting enough of it, it really does play a role, and it makes a difference. And the way you feel, it'll make a difference. Like it's no joke. Getting the right kind of getting the right kind of fatty acids in and balancing that out with your body is going to make you feel different. Like every, all the processes in the body start to work better. Everything. So it's putting a good game plan together and it's causing the body to work great and, and build a solid system around it. That's where you really begin to win the game. So your joint pain many times could just be inflammation. That's why the anti-inflammatory diet is a good way to go 
eating equal amounts of lean protein sources like chicken, fish, beef, or eggs, or low glycemic carbohydrates, the form of fruits and veggies, especially a lot of greens, and then your healthy fats, almonds, walnuts, cashews, macadamia nuts, avocados. When you're eating like that, you're cutting out inflammation. You're increasing the body's ability to not have the joint aches and pains. See, that's the key. So you want to get your body to dial in, okay? You want to get your body to to really get down and get balanced. Because once that happens, then the joint pain, the inflammation, a lot of that will go away. It's nutrition related, right? So you give the body what it needs. You find out what the deficiency is in the body. Give the body what it needs and watch what happens. And that's why people leave away fatty acids when they talk to joint pain. They don't even think about it. So the two go hand in hand, must go hand in hand. Hey, if you haven't picked up a copy of our free book, go to myfreehealthbook.com. It's my international bestseller, hard copy. Look, I want to give it to you for free, totally free. All you got to do is cover a little bit of shipping cost, whatever it costs to get it to you. And you get it in your hands and read it. Be a blessing. Tell other people about it. Learn what it means to really be healthy. Learn what it means to take responsibility for your own health and your own life. It's what it's about. Subscribe to our podcast too. Make sure if you have not joined our community in the podcast world, Luke, we put a new show up every single day. We want to be a blessing to you. Puts another hour in the charts. I want to thank our producers, Mr. Fig, also Derek Allen, John Garrison, our chief engineer. Go tell one person something you learned on the show. Together, we can transform the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. This is the show that helps you live your potential. This is Asa Rx. This show is designed to provide accurate information of a general nature on the subject matter covered. And given with the understanding that neither the host nor the station is engaged with rendering any form of medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. This information is not approved by the FDA and is not intended to diagnose, prevent, treat, or cure any disease. To experience more of ASA RX audio, visit us at asarx.com.